Hello, in this video we're going to talk about peer review in Canvas. Some of you may never have done peer review, and some of you probably have. But even if you have done peer review, then there are probably a bunch of you who have never done it in Canvas. So in this video we're going to talk about why we do peer review, and then how we're going to do it in Canvas, logistically speaking. So first, why do we peer review? From a teacher's perspective, there are so many benefits to peer review. Number one, it absolutely will help you to improve as a writer. If you write an essay to the best of your ability, this is the best you could do on your own, and then someone gives you feedback, and then you make the essay even better, that is the very process that you need to use to become a better writer because you are learning to get your writing to another level, get your writing to improve through that process of feedback. You are also practicing a lot of the skills you need to be a better writer. And just like with sports, right, if I was trying to play basketball and I couldn't get the ball in the hoop, what would I do? I would stand there and try over and over again. And someone would probably help me by giving me tips and telling me how to stand, how to hold my arms, so on and so forth, to help me be more likely to get the ball in. Every time I get the ball in, I'm more likely to get it in next time. So maybe at first I only get one out of five in, eventually two out of five in. So that process of feedback and practice, feedback and practice, is the exact process you need to improve as a writer. Number two, when we write, we write for an audience. We are never writing for no one, right? When we write in our diaries, we're writing for ourselves, but pretty much anything else you write, even from a text message to a tweet to an essay, you are writing for someone else to read, and peer review is an opportunity to let someone else read your writing and tell you, what they thought, what made sense, what didn't make sense, so that you can test your writing against an audience and see where your writing could be improved for that audience. Then the peer reviewer gets a lot of good things out of this. When you look at someone else's essay and you read it closely and you decide what could be improved, what's already good, what needs to be better, that practice of recognizing good writing and recognizing writing that could be better helps you to be able to look at your own writing and do that same process. So by practicing recognizing good writing, you yourself become a better writer. And then, of course, just the practical reason of this is a chance at a better grade. The person who is getting comments on their draft, I can guarantee you that if you turn in a draft and someone gives you feedback and then you improve your essay, no matter what grade you get on your final essay, it is a better grade than you would have gotten before peer review. And secondly, those of you who are peer reviewing, you are looking at other examples of how other students did the assignment, and that sometimes can clarify the assignment for you and help you get a better grade on the assignment. Okay? So there are two major deadlines for the peer review. And this might confuse a few students, but it will stay consistent the entire semester. How do the deadlines work? So you have two deadlines. You'll see one assignment, but the one assignment will have two deadlines. The first one is the deadline for posting your draft. Okay, so if for example, you have to post your draft by Wednesday at midnight, you have to post your draft by Wednesday at midnight. If you do not post your draft on time, you will not get assigned a peer review. Importantly, for example, if you turn in your peer review on Wednesday, your draft for peer review on Wednesday at midnight, when the instructor comes in on Thursday morning to push a button to assign peer reviews, Canvas will only assign peer reviews to students who have submitted a draft. It is a feature in Canvas. If your draft is not there, you will not get a peer review. If you then submit your draft late, it's already too late. There's no way to move the peer reviews around. All the peer reviews have been assigned at that point. So you cannot get a, draft, uh, a peer review draft if you do not turn in your draft on time. So it's very, very important that the first deadline is met. Then the second deadline is your deadline for coming in and leaving comments for the drafts assigned to you. So for example, if you're assigned one draft or two drafts and the second deadline is Friday, for example, 
Maybe you submit your draft on Wednesday, your teacher assigns peer reviews early Thursday morning, and then you have until Friday to log in and leave comments for two students or one student or however many were assigned to you. So you need to go ahead and remember the two deadlines and understand the two deadlines. One is for posting and one is for commenting. Of course, importantly, there are questions for you to use to leave comments and you will need to remember that they are in the assignment. So if you're wondering where are the questions that I need to use for this peer review when I'm leaving comments, you have to go into the assignment where you submitted your draft and you can see the questions that you're supposed to use when you comment on another student's draft. And I'm going to go over how to comment in just a minute. Okay, but I want you to understand that there are two or deadlines, one for posting, one for leaving comments. All right, and then how will you be graded? You are graded on the quality of your feedback. Okay, so that means that you must use the questions that the instructor provides in order to have quality feedback. If you go in and leave a couple of comments about grammar, but it's very clear that you did not use the questions that the instructor provided, then that is not quality feedback and that will affect your grade. You must leave the comments in text. I will show you how to do that on the next screen, but you must leave the comments in the text in the margins of the essay, essentially, and not just at the very end. And you must explain any feedback. I will go over this in a second, but you will go ahead and explain any feedback you give, such as um, if you say something is confusing, you have to explain why it was confusing. If you say you should move this, you have to explain why the student should move this, okay? So you have to explain any feedback you're giving. And of course, if your grade is based on the quality of your feedback, that means you will get a zero if you don't leave any feedback. So if you submit a draft for the first deadline, but then for the second deadline, you don't log in to give anybody any feedback, you will get a zero. Okay, so your grade is based on your feedback. You get zero credit for just submitting a draft. Okay, so now let me explain how the peer review works in Canvas. When you turn in your draft, just to use the same example, Wednesday at midnight, whatever date your teacher chooses, but let's say it's Wednesday at midnight, and the teacher comes in Thursday morning and pushes a button in Canvas to assign the peer reviews, when you log into Canvas, in your to-do list, there will be two links or one link, however many links uh, correspond to the number of drafts you're supposed to review. So if your teacher wants you to review two students, you're going to get two links. If your teacher only wants you to look at one student, you're going to get one link. When you follow that link, you will end up at a student's paper. And you will be able to see their paper like this. And you will see a screen somewhat like this, okay? Now importantly, if you can't see the student's paper and you just see a link here, you know, like you see this uh, is the file link, right? And if you see it repeated here and you can't see their draft, you may see a phrase up here in the corner that says view feedback. Make sure you click view feedback and then you will be able to see the page like this, okay? And this is from an old class this is an email, not an essay, but this is what the peer review screen will look like, okay? So then you have all these buttons up here for commenting in text. And when we say in text, what we mean is you have to comment using these buttons. Don't comment by just answering the questions in the comment box, okay? So if my teacher asks me a question like, um, is the thesis thesis clear? So one of my jobs would be to come find the thesis and I would want to comment on whether or not it was clear. So I would highlight the thesis. This is not the thesis, but this is just as an example. And I could use the highlighter tool, right? And I can change the color of my highlight. And then I click this little button and I can leave a comment, right? I thought your thesis was very strong, for example, okay? And then you are leaving feedback in the margins. If the teacher asks you to find the weakest paragraph and explain what could be stronger, right? You can keep it the same color, change colors. You're going to go ahead again and leave feedback and say, I thought this was your weakest paragraph. And remember, we have to explain why 
because, right, I suggest that you, whatever, okay? So we're going to explain our feedback so that the person who gets their draft back understands why we left that comment and what they can do to make it better. Because remember, when you're writing a draft, you understand what you're thinking. But when people give you feedback, it's hard to understand the feedback unless they explain it. So for example, if somebody says, this is confusing, but I read it and I don't see why it's confusing, then I'm not going to change anything. Unless my reviewer says this was confusing because I thought your grandma had already died at this point, but now I'm thinking she's still alive and I'm still confused, right? Those kinds of things can help us understand what was confusing so that we can actually fix it, okay? And then when I get my reviews back, when I get my draft back, I not only see my reviewer's comments, but I can see what part of my essay they're connecting this comment to. There are other tools here. There's a text tool where you can write something missing your introduction. Okay, and again, you can have change the color. Um, there's also a strike through tool, which means like you should delete this, um, but you should still explain why you suggested they delete it, right? So, you know, whatever comment you want to leave to connect to this strike through. And again, you can change the color of the strike through. And then there's a drawing tool, you know, so you could say something about this. And again, always leave a comment explaining why you're marking up the page and giving us enough information that we understand what question you're responding to that your teacher gave you. And also enough information that the person whose draft this is understands how they can improve their draft. So once you're done leaving comments in the margins using the different tools, and of course, try not to over highlight, you know, if you highlight every single sentence, it can be overwhelming for the person who's getting this back. So if I want to highlight this entire paragraph, I can just maybe highlight the end and say this whole paragraph, right, so that I don't overwhelm them. But if I want to point out just one sentence, I might highlight the whole sentence. And you just saw I can delete comments. I just did that. So if you make a mistake, you can delete your comment too. Okay, um, so once you're done commenting and answering all the questions and leaving feedback in the margins, what you want to do is, um, if I just close out, everything will save. However, the link may or may not disappear from my to-do list. If I want the link to disappear from my to-do list, I would just comment something in this comment box to tell Canvas I'm done with the assignment. So see my feedback is enough. Right, And then once I hit submit, that means the link is going to disappear from my to-do list and I don't have to actually um, do this anymore. Now, you don't have to actually leave a comment. If you want to just ignore the link, that's fine. Um, but if you leave the, the comment here, it will disappear from your to-do list. But the main goal for the peer review is for you to leave in-text comments. And just to re review, to get an A, you have to leave feedback that you explain. You need to leave feedback that is clearly responding to the questions your teacher provided. Okay? And you need to comment in the margins, in text. So if you answer all the questions by typing it all out in the assignment comments, you will not get full credit. All right, if you have any questions at all, please reach out to your instructor. Happy reviewing.